So Brad and I decided that we were going to go ahead and go on a fishing trip to a new spot. We had some lakes and some creeks and rivers we wanted to check out in a new area. We didn't really know what the weekend held for us. We figured we were gonna get into some trout. We brought some dry flies and some streamers and like normal, I always bring every rod, all the flies I've got, and I always shove them in the back of the car and we go on a trip. It's between the both of us, like we honestly have a small fly shop, if not sporting goods stores. So we headed out to the spot and we got there early morning on Friday and we fished all day long. I flew my drone over the rivers and we checked out a bunch of different spots and some lakes and we really had nothing all day long. We had nothing to show for it. The first day was, was pretty tough. I mean, we fished hard and I mean, we covered a lot of water and I mean, it just came up zeros. So we decided that night we were gonna night fish real hard. We were gonna throw mice, we were gonna throw some streamers. And of course, same results. We really didn't have anything major happen. And we went skunked all Friday and we went skunked all Friday night. Well, you know, we got up that next morning. We decided we'd go cover some other water and go check some other things out. And we pulled up to a new spot we wanted to check out. We had looked at it on Google Earth. It looked pretty good, promising. We showed up and there were some local boys parked out at the spot. So we got out, we chatted with them. One of the guys told us something that blew our mind. He said, yeah, there's some trout in here, but I'm using six pound tests and I just hooked and lost a four foot sturgeon. And me and Brian kind of go, what? Like, did, did, did he just say a four foot sturgeon? And so we talked to this guy more and more and he started giving us some information like, hey, go down, check out this spot, go check out this section, you'll see something. So me and Brian, you know, we go into the sporting goods store, AKA the back of Brian's car. And Brian has some rods that he had from a shark fishing trip. And I don't know why they were in his car, but you know what? I, I was happy to have them. And it, it basically, we were like, if we're gonna hook a big fish, it's gotta be on a 10 weight or bigger. We go back to the car, we grab a 10 weight and a 12 weight, fly rod and we're fortunate that we had them in the car. We rigged up some 30 pound tests. We rigged up about a five foot section of it. We put on a, the biggest fly we had, like a, you know, a big uh, pike fly. So we hiked into this new spot and lo and behold, we roll up. Brad sees this big dark shape. Brad starts casting at this fish, casting this fish. We're trying to figure out what to do. We're putting on maybe a little more weight, try to get down in the current. And I start walking away to go back to my backpack and all of a sudden I hear Brad scream my name. And I turn around and he's got a 10 weight doubled over. And I look and I see this big fish just thrashing on the surface. And he's hooked up on the fly rod with a fly with a sturgeon. And immediately the fish freaks out. And my first thing is to start yelling at Brian because, dude, I had no idea. Like, I didn't know how I was supposed to land this thing. Like, this thing looks like it's four or five feet long. Like, I didn't know what to do with it. So, Brian comes running back, and he's trying to walk me through it, you know. And he gets down, helps me get the fish landed, and we're just both, I mean, the electricity is just building. Like. We're so excited. I mean, this is the first sturgeon that I've ever caught, and the first one definitely that I ever caught on a fly. Like, that was just the gnarliest thing that could have taken place right there. And I, had I not caught another fish, I would have been totally sufficed with that. It's unreal. Just the power. I mean, they, he fought and fought, got right on the surface, and just rolling. That is just a sweet looking fish. So Brad lands this sturgeon and we're shocked. I mean, he's got like a three, three and a half foot fish and on the fly rod, on a fly, just something that we had never heard of before, something that we were totally unprepared for and it happened. And so we kept fishing. Uh, I was up to bat. I ended up hooking and losing two fish. <laughs> And you know, we we got into a couple, but they really weren't the size that this guy had been telling us about. He he was speaking to us about these fish that 
we're not three feet. So the one thing that was kind of in the back of me and Brian's head, I mean, we caught a couple of fish. You know, we both landed a fish each, and I think lost a couple. But that local guy had really just been telling us about something that was truly next level. Not this three, three and a half foot range sturgeon, but something that was truly like a shark. Sunday morning, we decided that we were gonna float a really long section of river. We get up, get the fly craft ready, chart our course of basically what we're gonna do. We look on Google Earth and find, you know, what our possibilities are and how far we can go. And So we inflated the fly craft, we put in in the early morning, and we started rowing and looking. Eventually, we're crossing over this really deep hole, it was about 10 feet deep, and Brad peers off the side of the front of the uh, fly craft and he sees a fish. And I just see something. It literally scared me. Like, I was like, no way, that is not a fish in this little creek. And I looked down and what we saw just blew our mind. So we get out, just, I mean, it was a scramble. I grabbed the fly rod, it was my shot, basically. I was up first and I'm trying to get in front of this thing. And it is basically a huge, you know, log. It looks like an alligator, and it's just moving in a circle around this big, you know, deep pool. And every once in a while, you get a glance up, and you're like, oh, there it is over there. And all of a sudden, he says, oh, here it comes, here it comes. And this fish swarms back around through the hole going downstream. And I turn the camera on, and I start filming. And next thing I know, I see Brad's rod just go, doom, doom. And he sets the hook, and it's solid. And I'm like, there's no way that's a fish because he's got a 10-way fly rod and he's cranking on it and it's not moving. And then all of a sudden I hear zzzz, and this fish starts going. You got him? I, I fight this fish, and I mean, it feels like an eternity. I mean, my arms are just burning. It goes on, it runs down. It sticks me in this big, deep pile of crap at the bottom of this deep hole, and I think I lost it. Like, I can't move it. And I'm just heaving back on it, like, as hard as I can. Just a giant, my arm just shaking. We finally were able to get to the point that I was able to wade out, grab this fish's tail, and pull it up close and we flipped it on its back, got it to go dormant on us, and we've got about 150 pound sturgeon right there. get some great photos of it. I mean, I'm just sitting there. I, I, It's like a dream. Like, I can't even believe that this had just happened. Not only had I caught the biggest fish of my life, but it's a fish that a lot of people say that you can't catch on a fly rod. Brian measured it out. The tape wasn't long enough. We had to point and then flip the tape around and go the next thing. It ends up being six foot six. We do the calculations on it and it comes out to be 100 and 50, 160 pound fish, and I am just completely blown away. So the clouds kind of rolled in after that. Would rode a few miles and didn't see anything else. This local guy talked about a big fish. Maybe that was the only one. The clouds covered overhead. The wind picked up and visibility just was almost gone. 
it was starting to get towards late evening and I really had given up hope that I was going to get into a fish that I would consider the fish of a lifetime. We kind of got a little bit of window of sun and we came around this corner and I thought I'd saw, seen something. Lo and behold, Brad turns and he's rowing the fly craft and he says, right there, is that a fish? And I look down and sitting pretty deep coming up over this shelf, we see this fish. And this is not just a fish, this, this is like a whale. And he's looking to see where I was pointing at and all of a sudden this big fish comes up onto that sandbar and it's long, like it looks as long as the fly craft. I start throwing my fly at him, he goes up and he turns back around and he's coming straight at us. And I drop my streamer right down in front of him and we see this fish cruise over my streamer and he just inhales it and just woofs it, dude. I mean, it just sucked it right in. It was one of the most incredible takes I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my God. My God, crap, this is so good. So I set the hook, this fish goes nuts. In the first 30 seconds, it jumped out of the water three times, and the size of this fish was mind-blowing. What was really cool about this experience, and I felt so smug about it during the entire fight, is that I was hooked up with the biggest fish in my life. I was hooked up on the fly rod, I was hooked up on a fly, and I was hooked up in 100% public water. Brian has it on, and I mean, it. we fought that thing. The wind was blowing. It was throwing the fly craft into the bushes. It's just dragging us up the river. And I mean, I'm trying to oar, I'm trying to, to get this all on, on film, like I'm being the cameraman, the oarsman, and trying to help Brian direct this fish. And he's just holding on for dear life. Like he's just in this thing, you know, for the long haul. <laughs> oh my God! He's a giant! This fish drug us up the river, jumping and fighting its way up. And it probably towed me and Brad and the flycraft up the river with the wind and all over a quarter mile. We finally get to a point and it tucks down into about a 12 or 15 foot deep hole and I jump out of the boat. I'm fighting this fish on the point. I've got muck all the way up to my knees. I can barely move. This fish is right there. We can see it. We're so close and finally I pull my rod tip up, I've got my 12 weight bent almost all the way down. and the electricity just goes through the roof. And I hold on for dear life and this fish starts thrashing, it turns, and I have landed a seven and a half foot sturgeon on a fly rock. It was incredible, and to say it was fun is an understatement. I don't know if I've ever had more fun fighting a fish. Brad and I were laughing the entire time. We were so excited to see this fish and to have it up close, I mean, it's literally something that people tell you you can't do. Brian tapes his fish out, comes out at about seven and a half feet, like almost 200 pounds, just an absolute giant. What started off as a weekend chasing trout ended up being a weekend chasing the biggest fish of our lives. It was something you can never predict, and it was just something that dreams are made of on these trips. You. You can't ever go into a trip expecting to catch the biggest fish of your life when you're going for trout like that. 
but when something turns out that way, you just gotta take what life throws at you and just make the best of it. And when you make the best of it, sometimes you really just run into something that changes your life. just goes to show like you, you you just have to be optimistic you go out you have fun you fish but you know never doubt the local knowledge <laughs> you know about old Wallace hiding in the bushes like dude we just proved that 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 story those stories can be true 